Hey everybody, stay tuned for Brian and I talking about deployment acceleration and how it can help on your governance journey. Welcome to the Azure Enablement Show, where we're having technical conversations with Microsoft experts about some of the questions or obstacles that you might face on your cloud adoption journey. Now, continuing on our governance topics, we are talking about deployment acceleration today. And to navigate through that topic, I'm welcoming back Brian to the show. Brian, welcome back. Hey, Sarah. Thanks for having me again. It's awesome to have you. Now, the governance topic is something that can often have a collective groan around the room when you mention it because it can be sometimes seen as a blocker and a way for management to control how people do their jobs. Um, is that something you face? And if so, how do you tackle that, Brian? Oh, all the time. Yeah. And, and that's really where deployment acceleration comes into play. If governance is a way to stop people from doing things, it's not going to be looked on very kindly by the developers or the business or the workload teams. So when we think about deployment acceleration, it's important that we think about uh, governance as a team sport. And uh, a little bit of a diagram here I'll pull up that just talks about that a bit. Uh, so when we're working with teams on cloud adoption, we have the cloud adoption team that's doing new things. And if they're doing new things alone, at some point, they're going to hit a barrier of security or operations or other forms of governance. So deployment acceleration is the mindset of the governance team not being the barrier, but the collective glue that brings them together and brings in the security team, brings in the operations team, brings them all together to have a conversation early. And when you do that, it makes it to where you can create guardrails that let those teams innovate safely and confidently and not get to that sticking point at the end where you have to say, oh, that's great, but. Okay, cool. So deployment acceleration, Brian, what does that phrase actually mean when we're talking about it? Uh, it's, it's that very thought about how do we use governance to deploy faster and not be that roadblock. Um, so a great example of that is I worked with a, a customer in the US a while back that had some really cool innovation. Uh, they could deploy quickly, they could build quickly, but they couldn't get to production. And it was a real shame because what that customer had was this, this really cool digital teddy bear that you know, grandma or grandpa could record a, a saying, post out on Azure, a uh, child squeezes the teddy bear and it plays that saying back and it really creates that close bond with, with the grandparents or parents or whoever. Uh, it, it, we built it out, we developed a solution, we built the, the teddy bear itself, everything's ready to go. As we took the solution to production, the governance and security team came in and realized that there were, there were ways that you could easily penetrate that software and send an inappropriate message to the bear. So by not having that team early, it paused that, that engagement. Sadly, it paused it by a year. So the product never hit market. It never came out, never saw the light of day. And it was a real shame. So deployment acceleration is the thought of when you're doing that early stage design, the governance team is a partner that comes in and helps you with the design and says, gee, if you're doing that, well, here's a couple of things we want to think about and just really help get to that, that final production deployment state a little more smoothly. So it sounds like there's a change in how people can think about deploying things or a mindset change with this deployment acceleration. How do people or organizations make that shift, Brian? Yeah, so the, the shift occurs culturally first. Just by asking questions, trying to be involved, uh, it really takes a step from the governance team to come forward and say, I'm, I'm not the bad guy. I'm not trying to stop you. What can we do together? And what we see from an organizational structure is that the, the overall org can help encourage this. So when we look at the CCOE model or the Cloud Center of Excellence model to organization, uh, that, that helps quite a bit. So in that organizational structure, we bring together governance, platform, automation, and security. And we bring them all together under a Cloud Center of Excellence that's there to help train and support those cloud adoption teams. And that structure is a way to create the teams that are there to demonstrate that support beyond just individuals saying, I'm here to help. So we've seen that be a very, very valuable approach. And, and that's all facilitated through things like the, the deployment acceleration discipline of the cloud adoption framework. Okay, that makes sense. Um, it sounds like there are a lot of changes that an organization has to invest in, um, some team setup, etc. What are the motivations for an organization to actually spend time doing this and, and shifting towards the de deployment acceleration um, mindset? If they don't do it, Brian, are they going to miss out? What, what are, what, what's the benefit to them actually doing this? 
Yeah, gladly. So the, the deployment acceleration is, is purposely the last discipline in cloud governance. So we generally suggest that governance teams get really good at things like cost management, security baselines, resource consistency, and figuring out identity. Once you've got those basics of governance down, then you've already made some of that shift. You start to do that work and engage those teams. It's not as big of a leap. Now, if, if you can't wait that long and you want to jump in right away, then you can go straight there. There are going to be some, some learning curves and some growth patterns that you have to go through. But ultimately, as you get through those growth patterns, what you'll see is a faster time to market, less roadblocks, less blocks to production release because you've got those guardrails in place. And the more you automate governance, the more development teams can understand what's expected of them the more they can even do things like run a policy that tests for things that you're looking for. So if they accidentally leave in something that wouldn't pass governance, it's caught right away. So it's all about acceleration and, and getting the market faster and doing so with less effort. Now that only matters if that's really important to you. If you're in a highly regulated organization that's more concerned with control and limits and security protections, well, maybe the returns aren't as high. But when innovation is important to you, deployment acceleration is a, a pretty important place to invest. Okay, that sounds really good. Um, if they are investing in this deployment acceleration kind of mindset and shifting towards it, are there any indicators for them actually going on that journey? Key, like, do they can they show how they're being successful? Um, how do they how do they show they're actually doing deployment acceleration? Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a number of key indicators and there's actually tools to help with that as well. So if we look at the tool alignment, a couple of the key tools that people use are Azure Blueprints, Azure Policy, uh, things like uh, grouping, tagging, resource management templates. And I share the tools first because these are easy indicators. Um, Azure Advisor probably being one that stands out really heavily. So Azure Advisor provides notifications of things that you could possibly do to tune your environment. If you have a lot of Azure Advisor notifications, um, maybe there's some things that you're missing and some learning opportunities. So tracking and bringing down the, the number of notifications from Advisor is one great indicator that has both deployment acceleration and operations management benefits. Uh, other things are the number of environments that are governed by blueprints or the number of policy audits that pass without main, making any changes, in particular as you're releasing a production. And ultimately, the, the biggest one is how much of the environmental configuration is in a shared repository like GitHub and how much of that is used during the deployment cycles. So those are all great indicators that help really determine growth in this particular discipline. Okay, that sounds really good. If people want to get started with deployment acceleration, Brian, where can they go to get some more information and get started on it? Yeah, so this is one of the disciplines in the cloud adoption framework. So that's a, an easy place to start. In particular, the disciplines that are outlined are things around process integration, which you can find right from the, the uh, overall corporate policy section related to, to deployment acceleration. Uh, there's also guidance there around how to engage and, and build out CI/CD pipelines and infrastructure code skills. Um, or more directly, if you want to take action today, the, the biggest action you can take is stand up a GitHub or Azure, D, uh, Azure DevOps repo to start centralizing and sharing those templates, get those out to your end users, or start working with Azure landing zones, because while they are about environmental readiness, they each come with infrastructure as code structures that you can use to make it easier for people to start looking at the world through these new lenses. And then uh, finally, as you start to mature, you might see things, see opportunities to use service catalogs to take not just a single ARM template, but a whole solution and package it up so that it can be quickly and easily deployed out to your, your internal customers. So those are a couple of things that we outline in the cloud adoption framework that you can use as best practices. Uh, there's also some things that we can show in the Azure portal that you can start doing right away as well. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, cool. So let's switch over to the portal here and we'll do a little bit of demos. So we talked about um, using Azure landing zones as one way to start, get, start with deployment acceleration. Um, if you look at the overall landing zone options, we've got the uh, CAF Enterprise Scale landing zones that you can use a variety of options for. These give you really rich uh, blueprint uh, policy ARM template configurations that you can deploy out that take you really far down the, down the path. Uh, but something that might be a little easier to start with is something more like the foundation blueprints. And we'll demo that just a little bit here. But now if you're looking for inspiration of what can we do with deployment acceleration and infrastructure as code and, and all of these capabilities, let's, let's actually start with the enterprise scale architecture. 
So okay. in Android scale, there's an architectural view that we've laid out that shows ways that you can structure how identity and access management is deployed, um, how you manage identity in a su separate subscription or management groups in one subscription with all of the operational management capabilities, or how you manage connectivity. And the reason this one's a good reference is because this takes deployment acceleration to the next level. Rather than saying we're going to write an ARM template that can connect your network, we're going to provide a, a dedicated subscription that all it does is on-prem connectivity. So now the next time a development team says, man, I, I could really build this, but I can't do it without getting connection to that, that SQL Server on-prem, they don't have to think about that. They don't have to build that connectivity. They just simply ask for a VNet peer between their environment. And now you give them a really simplistic ARM template that says, add this to a virtual network, and now you've got that access that you need. And it's controlled and governed. Uh, same thing with operations management. It's standing up an environment that has operation management capabilities, make sure that the development teams can build, but not have to worry about whether or not they're deploying all the tools that the operations team is going to need later in the cycle. Uh, it also gives them insights into things like log analytics so that they can start to get queries and alerts and other things about what they're building. So those are the type of things that a development team really values and prizes if you can give it to them ahead of time and create those kind of guardrails or just general accelerations. That sounds great. Awesome. And so the enterprise scale version is one way to do that. If that's something though that you want to build on your own, a great starting point is to look at the more start small option that we have outlined in the CAF Foundation Blueprint. So this blueprint you can apply to any subscription, and it starts purposely with a set of very uh, very small set of policies and uh, ARM templates that you can use. You can add to that from there. But it starts with things that are pretty common for governance, like tagging your call center or enabling uh, Azure Security Center so that you can test for security. It also puts some parameters in, like allowed locations and allowed locations for resource groups, so you end up with your resources in the right place. Uh, but this is a good starting point because it makes it really easy for you to add on things that are valuable to your developers. So let's say you're working with a team that's building out, um, I don't know, let's say a data lake solution. Uh, if, we, if we look at policy assignments and do a quick search for data lake, we can see that there's a couple of data lake policies there already, like diagnostic logs should be enabled in data lake storage. So what this does is by adding that particular policy assignment and applying this blueprint to a development environment, those developers now have your requirements for governance but they also have requirements to set up the tools that you know they're going to need so that they don't forget to add these things later. So these are examples of deployment acceleration, working with the teams to get ahead of what they're going to need and using the tools that are available in Azure to put those in place automatically or with very little implementation required from those workload teams. That's awesome, Brian. Thank you so much for taking me through that and kind of clearing up what deployment acceleration was. I really appreciate your time today. So if you want to check out some of the resources that Brian's been mentioning today, please do hit up our description box where we'll be dropping the links. And remember to tune in for other episodes of the Azure Enablement Show.